just want to be obedient to what I believe the Lord wants us to hear today. Today's word of the day it comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. And Jesus said, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I got a lot of scripture, so I'm going to say repeating it here. We're going to break it down. But, uh, well, you know, we're going to actually just say treasures. We'll talk about treasures. And, of course, there are treasures here on earth, and there are treasures in heaven. And God wants us to focus on treasures in heaven. Uh, which means well, that's where our heart will be as well. So in Hebrews 13, verse 5, it says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. So right off the bat, God is just reminding us that we don't need to look for things and not only about physical things or money or things, anything that will bring us comfort and, and safety and fulfillment or all those things, God is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And we can be content with whatever it is we have and because he's the one providing it for us and he knows what we need. Praise the Lord. In 1 John 2, verses 15 and 16, says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Amen. And, you know, we, we live in this world, and there might have been a season where we just didn't even walk with God, and we only found hope and and comfort in material things or people or whatever the case but um all these things these things are not going to fulfill us first timothy chapter 6 verses 8 through 10 says that having food and clothing with these we shall be content but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Amen. Lots and lots of scripture just taught, reminding us that just, it's not what we need here. So, now, we've talked about these treasures on earth, and God, Jesus was telling us, don't gather treasures on earth. Instead, gather treasure in heaven. And so the question is, how do we gather heavenly treasure? And I believe he's going to tell us. Matthew chapter 19, verse 21, Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect or complete, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come, follow me. Amen. So he's saying, let go of the things of this world, and you'll have treasures by surrendering ourselves and living for him, just laying down our lives is how we gather treasure in heaven. Does that mean we all need to become monks and nuns and really sell everything that we have? Or is there something a little more spiritual to it? Is it not a literal thing? In Psalm 62, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 10, it says, Do not trust in oppression, nor vainly hope in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. So God actually blesses those who walk with him. Sometimes, sometimes people are walking with him and they're in a prison camp in some country where they persecute Christians. It's not dependent on anything except what he wants to give us. So sometimes he gives us increase. Sometimes he blesses us so that we don't need to worry about material things so that we can focus on serving him. But if they do increase, it's about our heart towards those things. <clears throat> so there's, again, <coughs> excuse me, 
money, of possessions, people, whatever it is, God may give us increase. He really wants our heart because that's what he said. Where your heart is, that's where your treasure is or vice versa. So in the end, all of this is about loving God. This is what he redeemed us for. In uh, John 14, verse 15, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. What are his commandments? To love God first, to have no other gods, to have no other idols, to, um, you know, the Ten Commandments, all those things. If we love him, we're going to do those things. Why do I say that? Because in Colossians chapter 3, verse 5, it says, Therefore, put to death the member, your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and here it is, covetousness, which is idolatry. And we know idolatry is not something that God wants for us. Covetousness is wanting things that God has not given us already. God knows what we need. So if we're, if our, we're seeking after things to fulfill our lives or have safety or whatever it is, that is covetousness, which equals idolatry, and we know God doesn't want idolatry in our hearts, and we don't want it either. Praise the Lord. Matthew 6, verse 24, Jesus said, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Again, money, possessions, or anything else, because all those things are gifts from God anyway. We're not here to worship the gift, but the one who gives it to us. And so our heart needs to be for God, and he's the one who can cause us to do that if we ask. Praise the Lord. And so we get to our back to our word of the day. Lord, we thank you, and we ask you to convict us, to search our hearts, and show us if we're laying up for ourselves treasures on this earth. We don't want that. We don't want to worry about those things. Give us instead treasures in heaven. Give us the faith to let go and just pursue you. Seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And all these things will be given unto us. Then we will have that treasure in heaven and no one will be able to take it away from us. And give us a heart for you. That You are our treasure and that's where our heart will be and that's where we will be Again, fill it with your light for this world to see. And we know we already have the greatest treasure of all, and that's you and eternal life with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Make this happen in our lives, Lord. We can't do it on our own. So we thank you. This is what you're going to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. That is our word of the day.